Welcome to Barebones Camera, where we share the ins and outs of cinematography, breaking down real setups and taking you behind the scenes on professional film shoots. Today's show is sponsored by Kinefinity. Hey everyone, my name is Lee Lishbo Underwood, and today I'm chatting about test footage I shot with Kinefinity's new cinema lenses, the Mavo Primes. Kinefinity approached me about testing them out, together with the Mavo LF, and I was curious to find out how they perform, since they are nicely built, cover full frame, and are pretty affordable. I put together several tests to highlight a number of attributes I look for as a cinematographer, and in this video we'll have a look at bokeh, color, contrast, and lens flares in a natural day exterior setting. Many more tests can be seen in parts 1 and 3 on Barebones camera. My goal here is not so much a lens review, but rather a tool for other cinematographers to compare the different qualities of these lenses with other options that are out there, which I think is more useful. So let's get started. Here we can get a sense of the bokeh, or out of focus highlights, of the lenses in a nice natural day exterior environment. Forests are special for how they break up points of light, and different lens sets and t-stops will represent this quite differently. This isn't really a scientific test, but more of an assessment of the lens's look and feel. I tested them wide open, as well as stopped down at t2.8 and t4. Personally, I really like the dreamy quality of the out-of-focus background uh, in this situation, which is particularly pronounced when the lenses are wide open, but also present and more controlled as you stop down. So running the same test over and over gets a bit boring. So here our talent, Kathleen, went for a horror movie interpretation. And here we transported into the Wizard of Oz. Here's a look at color consistency between three of the lenses, the 25, 35, and 75. These are all shot with the same settings under the exact same gray sky, and when I reviewed the footage, I discovered a green cast on my example of the 35mm, as you can see here. I spoke to Kinefinity about this, and their lens engineer said it was an issue they solved after the first few lens sets were produced, and my copy was actually one of those very first. Apparently, the 35mm is a difficult focal length to engineer and requires different glass elements than the other lengths, which introduced a color shift. Kinefinity offered for me to test the updated set. I'll post my findings on that when I get a chance, and in the meantime, the issue here is solvable with some minimal color grading. On this sequence of Kathleen riding the elevated U-Bahn through Berlin, we can get a sense of how the Mavo Primes handle extreme contrast. This is definitely not a scientific test, but again, more for the look and feel of the lenses. I like the contrast the lenses offer, with some fairly deep blacks, but maintaining good color and detail in very brightly exposed areas.
And finally, we get a look at how the Mavo Primes respond to lens flares, in this case from the sun. All lenses flare to some degree, and when I'm testing lenses, what I look for is how they produce veiling flare from bright light sources outside of the frame, and ghosting flare from bright light sources inside or just outside the frame. Veiling flare reduces the contrast and color of the image, and the question to ask is always, by how much? As you can see, the veiling flare is very under control when the sun starts to affect the image from outside the frame. Contrast and color are reduced only a small amount at first. As the sun enters the frame, it reduces further, but still keeps a reasonable amount of contrast and color. Ghosting flare creates bright shapes and artifacts, which are actually repeated images of the light source, as a result of that light source reflecting off the glass elements inside the lens. Here, the ghosting flare has lots of character. The strobe ray artifacts from the sun as it enters the frame are very present, although to me they look nice, similar to what I look for in classic lenses. I shot these tests with no matte box, which would normally block a lot of veiling and ghosting flare from outside the image frame. But in this case, it's helpful to see how the Mavo Primes perform under the most difficult circumstances. There are also some interesting things happening here on the edge of frame before the sun enters, sometimes with a ray of glowing light and a bit of a rainbow halo. We'll look at the halo in particular more in the night exterior tests, where I found that it can be eliminated by T2.8 or 2.8.5. Using a matte box would also probably eliminate this particular flare, since it happens when the light source is still out of the frame. But some cinematographers might find this flare really interesting, since it's so unique. That's it for this video. For more tests of the Mavo Primes, check out parts one and three, where I look at other characteristics in day interior and night exterior settings. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to catch that, as well as more behind the scenes looks at cinematography and filmmaking technology on set. Thanks again to Kinefinity for making this test possible. This is Barebones Camera, signing off.